Here we'll be looking at the equations and functions that represent parallel and perpendicular lines. Let's look at some definitions first. Lines are said to be parallel if they have the same slope. In more everyday terms, you might think of parallel lines as being kind of like train tracks. The rails don't really meet each other uh, as you move along the track. They keep the same distance apart. So this sort of uh, relationship like this. But in terms of straight line equations and functions, we're talking about equations like y equal to 2x plus 7 and y equal to 2x minus 4. Even though the y-intercepts may be different, the slopes in both cases are 2. So the lines will increase by the same rate as they're moving as you move from left to right. On the other hand, lines are said to be perpendicular if the product of their slopes is minus 1. So something like y equal to 2x plus 7 and y equal to minus a half x plus 7. These lines would be perpendicular because the product of 2 and minus a half is minus 1. In everyday terms, perpendicular lines are ones which intersect at right angles. Well, another way to check for right angles is to look at the slopes and multiply them together. If you get minus 1, then there's a right angle there where they intersect. Here's an example, actually three examples. Uh, for each of the following pairs of lines, classify the pair as par parallel, perpendicular, or neither. What you need to do here, in each case, is rearrange the equations to get them in y equals mx plus c form, and then have a look at the slopes of the lines. I'll do the first one and then leave you some time to try out the other two. When we have 3y equal to 3x minus 4, we can divide both sides by 3 and get y equal to x minus 4 on 3. On the other hand, the second equation, x minus 2y plus 1, equal to 0 becomes minus 2y equal to minus x minus 1 and finally y equal to 1 on 2 x plus 1 on 2. Having a look at the slopes of the two lines the first equation has a slope of 1. You can't see it we don't usually put the 1 in but there is one there. The second equation on the other hand has a slope of a half or 1 and a half are not equal to each other and for that matter when you multiply them together you don't get minus 1. So in this equation these lines are neither perpendicular or pa nor parallel. Okay give yourself a couple of minutes to try out B and C now and see if you can see any parallel or perpendicular lines. Okay in part B we have these two lines which we need to rearrange to y equal to mx plus c form. The first simply becomes y equal to 3x minus 4 and the second dividing by 2 will become y equal to 3x plus 4. Now on this occasion we can see that the slopes of both lines are equal to 3. When the slopes are equal we can say that the lines are parallel. Okay so let's look at part C. Here the first line is already in the correct y equals mx plus c form. Remember we're trying to get that form so that we can identify the slope. The second line however we need to divide the equation by 4 on both sides. We get x on 2 minus 5 on 4. Here we've got a slope of minus 2 in the first line and 1 on 2 in the second. Let's just check minus 2 times 1 on 2 well, that's going to multiply through to give us minus 1. So, product of the slopes is minus 1. So the lines here are perpendicular. Now, if you're not really sure how this is all working, we've done everything algebraically here just through the slopes being equal or the slopes products being minus 1. If you want, go back and check out the video on plotting these lines. Plot the two lines in each case and you should be able to see that they're either parallel or perpendicular or in the case of part A, neither parallel nor perpendicular. Let's take a look at another example. Now that we know a little bit about 
what, what, how we can find whether lines are parallel or perpendicular or not. Here we're going to look at finding the equation of a straight line through a given point, but which is also parallel to another given line. Now remember that to find the equation of a straight line, we need either two points or we need one point and the slope of the line. Here we're given one of the points, and then the other information we have is a line that it's parallel to. Well, let's just think back. If we know that it's parallel to the line, that means that it's got the same slope as the line. So by saying that it's parallel to minus 2x plus 6y equal to 5, we're effectively being told what the slope of the new line is. It's the same slope as this equation. So we need to rearrange that one. Minus 2x plus 6y equal to 5 rearranges to 6y equal to 5 plus 2x or y equal to 1 on 3x plus 5 on 6 which gives us the slope as 1 on 3. So we now know one point on our line and its slope. So that means we need to use the point slope formula y minus y1 equal to m x minus x1. In this case, y minus 4 is equal to m, which is 1 third, x minus x1 is 1. So we just need to rearrange that one to get back our standard form. y is going to be 1 third of x, then we have minus a third plus 4, which is going to be 3 and 2 thirds, or 11 on 3. Putting that all together, we've now got the equation of the straight line that we want, y equal to a third of x plus 11 on 3, which should pass through the point 1, 4. Of course, you can always check these things by substituting in, and it's got the slope that we want, 1 third. Here's a similar example. This time we're asked to find the equation of the straight line, again passing through a given point, and this time the extra information we've got is that it's perpendicular to a specific line. That's again telling us the slope information, but this time we need to have not the same slope, but the slope which will multiply by the slope of this line to give minus 1. The line that's given, x plus 3y equal to 7, in our regular form is going to be minus 1 on 3x plus 7 on 3, which we can see has a slope of minus 1 on 3. But how do we get the slope of the line we want? We want our, our new line to have a slope which when multiplied by this number will give us minus 1. Well, let's just for a moment call that slope m. We want our slope m multiplied by this one, minus 1 on 3, to be equal to minus 1. How do we figure out what m is? We need to either divide by this number or multiply both sides by minus 3 effectively the same thing. Doing so will tell us that m must be equal to 3. So we can check that. 3 by minus 1 on 3 will give us minus 1. So provided our new line has a slope of 3 and passes through this point, it's going to be the one we want. So let's go ahead again and use the point slope. y minus y1 is equal to m x minus x1. In our case, y minus 3 is equal to a slope of 3 times x minus minus 2. And then we've just got to clean it up. 3x, that'll become a plus 2 times 3 is plus 6, plus another 3. And we've got our line y equal to 3x plus 9. And that's the one that we want. So y equals 3x plus 9 will have a slope multiplied by this slope will give minus 1, so the two lines are perpendicular, and it's going to pass through the point that we want. So there we go. In this video we've defined the terms parallel and perpendicular, at least in terms of the gradient of a pair of lines, and related that a little bit to the more real world or everyday definitions of those words. We've also seen how to find the equation, or the linear function if you like, of a line which is either parallel or perpendicular to another line.